Welcome into WCTV News. I'm Hugh O'Neill. And I'm Rachel Pellegrino. Students' creativity was put to the test last week when SAB hosted a paint and sip in the Beehive. Ad Morganti has more. Last Thursday, Weensburg University students took a break from their busy lives and attended the paint and sip in the Beehive, which was put together by the Students' Activities Board. Students painted beautiful creations while enjoying free coffee and hot chocolate. This paint and sip was different compared to others. This is one of the uh, special paint and sips where we actually provide the beverage. Most of the time, the Beehive would be, we give tickets and they could go get their tickets renewed for a small drink at the Beehive. Students could choose from different toppings like Oreos, chocolate chips, whipped cream, and more. Another campus event inspired the making of the paint and sip. So we have another event called the Biscuit Brew, and that just sort of broke off from like the art series, and it just sort of came to fruition. The paint and sip is a very popular event among the students. They appear to love it. They love whenever we are able to, in, from what I've heard, they love it whenever we're just able to be together as a campus and have fun. They also love the free Starbucks. For WCTV News, I'm Adam Morganti. Do you enjoy live music and free coffee? Then you should stop by the Beehive for SAB's annual coffee house. WCTV's Lindsay Stanger has the details on how you can join in on the fun. There's no better way to kick off a semester like free coffee and live entertainment. Waynesburg University students gathered in the Beehive on Tuesday night to enjoy some fellowship, coffee, and music by the band Deep Fried Dandelions. Hours before the coffee house, however, things were not going so smoothly. It was very last minute. We were just filling in for another performance, so we just got word about it five hours before we came on stage. So it was very last minute, but I think we did pretty well. Somehow, I don't think the crowd was too upset about it. The other performers weren't very, feeling very well, and so I work up in student services, and I overheard the conversation. So I asked Ryan Smith if, hey, you guys needed anybody else? And I said, Harry and I could perform if nobody else performs for coffee house. So. Despite the panic that took place beforehand, the students seem to enjoy the music and the extra time with their friends. Well, we're studying right now and listening to the music while enjoying our coffee. Coffee House is a common event put on by the Student Activity Board that helps the students get out of their normal routine while still being productive. Despite what people may think, this event can make homework fun. This has been Lindsay Stinger reporting for Channel 14. This past Sunday was Super Bowl Sunday and Waynesburg students gathered in the Beehive for the big game. Riley Holsinger has the story. On Super Bowl Sunday, Waynesburg University's Student Activities Board held a Super Bowl party in the Beehive. During the game, the SAB had a giveaway where students could win a sweatshirt after every quarter. Students gathered to eat snacks such as chips and desserts that were football themed. They got to watch the game on three TVs and a giant projector. Students noticed a big difference between Super Bowl parties in the past compared to this year. Uh, last year they had a lot of food for it, uh, but uh, this year it was just kind of like chips and like vegetables. Not that I have anything against vegetables. Uh, they just had like chicken fingers and mac and cheese last year and it was sort of a letdown. Some students were happy the Chiefs won. Because I'm a huge uh, Patty Mahomes fan and you know they're often just so electric and I didn't want them to see them lose just because they, their defense isn't as good. I was rooting for the Chiefs, big Patty Mahomes guy. Also didn't want to see the 49ers win just because of the 49ers. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad the Chiefs were pulling it out there. And others weren't so happy. I wanted the 49ers to win the Super Bowl, but you know, God shines on Patrick Mahomes. In the end, students still enjoyed each other's company while watching the best football game of the year. Oh, it was fun. A lot of my friends were there, so you know it was a good chance to spend time with them. And Super Bowl was always you know fun to watch and be together with friends. So, yeah. What what can you go wrong with there with football and food? For 14 News, I'm Riley Holsinger. State Representative Pam Snyder has relocated her office to right here in Waynesburg. And the move has not slowed her down in progress as she is already working on new legislation. WCTV's Rachel Pellegrino attended the ribbon cutting ceremony and caught up with Representative Snyder. Okay, 
a countdown, and the cutting of a ribbon symbolize the opening of State Representative Pam Snyder's new legislative office on Thursday, January 30th. Located on West High Street, the new office is a more viable location and office space than the past location in the Greene County Office Building. We have so many constituents that come in to see us. It was very difficult for me to have two staff people there working um, and the, the little space that I had. It was very hard for me to even have a confidential conversation with a constituent. The new office, which was once a garage, will serve as Snyder's epicenter for fulfilling her duties as she represents Greene, Fayette, and Washington counties. Her most recent legislation is already underway. Our former sheriff, Brian Tennant, passed away last year from cancer. So the new Crawford Bridge that was just constructed down by the VFW, my legislation is going to name that bridge after Sheriff Brian Tennant. With the new office opening and the new legislative underway, Snyder is excited for what this new year brings. So, you know, we're hoping that being here and having this more, more, of a, more of a presence really on Main Street helps bring more people out into downtown Waynesburg, too. This is Ben Rachel Pellegrino reporting for WCTV News. This week, Punxsutawney Phil emerged from his burrow and did not see his shadow, which means he predicted an early spring. The event held every year on February 2nd is one of the biggest annual spectacles in southwestern Pennsylvania. And this year, several students from Waynesburg University were there to cover all the excitement on Groundhog's Day. Here's Emma Hurley to kick off our coverage. A record-breaking crowd funneled into Gobbler's Knob for the 134th Groundhog Day in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania on Sunday. The population of the town skyrocketed from 6,000 to an estimated 55,000 people anticipating the weather forecast of one popular woodland critter, Punxsutawney Phil. It's not as big a deal everywhere else, but here is. As the crowd summoned the dawn chanting, Life is short, praise the groundhog, they revved up excitement while enjoying live entertainment, fireworks, and popular Groundhog Day parodies. Punxsutawney Phil! Punxsutawney Phil! The day's festivities are overseen by a group of local dignitaries known as the Inner Circle. Fashioned in top hats, they stand by Phil for his prediction. I have a feeling he's going to see a shadow today. Six more weeks of winter. For there is no shadow of me. Yeah! And according to Phil, spring is on its way. Here's Riley Holsinger with more on Groundhog Day and its impact on Punxsutawney. Oh, it's just one day a year. Groundhog Day leaves a lasting impact for the community and businesses of Punxsutawney. The town of Punxsutawney normally just has 5,500 residents. For Groundhog Day this year, it had over 55,000 visitors. Businesses like Punxsy Phil's are packed for Groundhog Day every year. Stores look like Black Friday with guests trying to get their Groundhog Day souvenirs and apparel. Residents of Jefferson County notice the impact and effect that the holiday has on its county. A couple different things. Uh, one of the biggest uh, pizzerias down here in town that gives back to the community. We actually make donations to our local fire departments. Uh, last year was about $50,000 straight to the fire departments. 2,600 hotels in Jefferson County and surrounding counties sell out every year for Groundhog Day. The average visitor spends more than $200 on lodging, food, gas, and souvenirs. According to the Punxsutawney Chamber of Commerce, the event generates more than $1 million a year. The holiday was a multi-day festival that attracted Groundhog fanatics from all over the world. We caught up with visitors from Long Island, New York. Our aunt um, suddenly passed away, our aunt, her sister and her best friend, um, suddenly passed away last March. And she, for the last, what, 10 years? 15, 15 years, uh, decided that Groundhog Day was her holiday. So in honor of her, we came here to celebrate mm -hmm. Groundhog Day. Inner Circle me. members were trying to get spectators to engage no on a Life is Short, yeah. Praise the Groundhog chant. Since Phil didn't see a shadow, I'll praise the Groundhog while reporting for Channel 14 News. I'm Riley Holsinger. That's all for campus and local news. We'll have national news when we come back.
go to Kiefer here, and as you can see, it's a bit cloudy and rainy outside of Buell, and you may want to keep those umbrellas handy because that's expected to continue for the next couple of days. Be sure to stay tuned for the end of the newscast for my full weather report. Democrats will have to wait to see which of their presidential candidates came out on top during Monday's Iowa caucuses. According to two officials, campaign man campaigns were not told what to expect in the caucus results until Tuesday. Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, Senators Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren were all vying for first place as of Monday night. State officials point to the state party's new system as possibly causing the delay. They say there have been con some inconsistencies between the count from the first popular vote, the final vote, and the pledge delegates' figures. The Biden campaign criticized the considerable flaws in the vote reporting system in a letter to the Iowa Democratic Party. All the campaign filled with some wait time on Monday giving the speeches to their supporters. The lethal coronavirus is now a health emergency in the United States. The new quarantine and travel restrictions are set to begin both for American and foreign travelers beginning this weekend. As California confirms its now seventh case of the Wuhan coronavirus in the United States, Melissa Rainey has the latest. I have today declared that the coronavirus presents a public health emergency in the United States. Coronavirus now a public health emergency in the United States, triggering travel restrictions for American travelers. Any U.S. citizen returning to the United States who has been in Hubei province in the previous 14 days will be subject to up to 14 days of mandatory quarantine. Any U.S. citizen returning to the United States who has been in the rest of mainland China within the previous 14 days will undergo proactive entry health screening at a select number of ports of entry and up to 14 days of monitored self-quarantine. The restrictions are even more tight for international travelers coming to America. Foreign nationals, other than immediate family of U.S. citizens and permanent residents who have traveled in China within the last 14 days, will be denied entry into the United States. All flights from China into the U.S. will be funneled into seven airports. Those airports are JFK, uh, Chicago's O'Hare, in San Francisco, Seattle, Atlanta, Honolulu, and LAX. The new travel restrictions are set to begin Sunday, February 2nd at 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. Researchers are stopping clinical trials for an HIV vaccine. They say it just doesn't work. The vaccine is called HVTN702, or UHAMBO. Thousands of volunteers have been testing it in South Africa since 2016. The vaccine sponsor is the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Monday, the group announced people who used the vaccine were just as likely to get HIV as those who hadn't. Advocates say it's disappointing news, but they still hope to find a vaccine that works. A woman who says Harvey Weinstein raped her says she had a panic attack on the witness stand. Jessica Mann faced hours of questioning in a New York court on Monday. When trying to explain her relationship with Weinstein, she began sobbing uncontrollably. After a break in the proceedings, she tried to retake the stand, but she couldn't regain her composure. Mann said she was having a panic attack. She then left the court gasping for air, stumbling, and holding a stress bar. She could be heard wailing and screaming from the side room. Mann says Weinstein raped her twice. Weinstein's attorney, Donna Rutuno, is trying to paint in the encounters that it was consensual. She points to the messages that one in which Mann expresses her love for Weinstein. A high school girl in Oklahoma is dead and five other students are in the hospital, some in critical condition. After police say a man in a pickup truck ran them down near their school Monday. Here's a look at the scene from above. Police say a 56-year-old man driving a red pickup ran into a car, then ran into the group of kids, which were cross-country and track athletes out on a jog. But he kept driving, hitting two more cars on the way. Police say it all happened near Moore High School's athletic facilities, so there were a lot of students who saw it happen and were there when police showed up. Some of them were even able to point police in the right direction to where they saw that pickup truck drive off. 
The driver was arrested about two blocks away. They're still investigating, but as of now, no charges have been filed. The Super Bowl may have been Sunday, but the, but the impeachment trial of President Trump is heading to the fourth quarter. Closing arguments were delivered Monday by House managers and President Trump's defense team. The entire matter is likely to be wrapped up by Wednesday. One day after Tr President Trump gives the State of the Union, John Lorenk reports. President Trump's ongoing saga about his dealings with Ukraine is coming to an end. On Wednesday, the Senate will vote on whether to convict him and remove him from office. I will never buy into the fact that people will do something that's politi politically expedient, and I certainly hope that our Democratic senators uphold the Constitution and protect our country. A vote for acquittal is a near certainty. The Republicans have a majority in the Senate, and some Democrats might join them as well. The one I'm watching, frankly, is Doug Jones. He's on the ballot. Um, you know, he has a small chance for re-election in Alabama and probably not a large chance, but whatever number that is drops to zero or less than zero if he votes to convict the president. Although President Trump says his call with Ukrainian President Zelensky was perfect, some supporters concede it could have been handled better. Generally speaking, going after corruption would be the right thing to do. No, he, did it, he did it maybe in the wrong manner. Critics say now the president will face another jury on Election Day 2020. We get to send a message at the ballot box that cheating, lying, involving a foreign country in our own domestic politics, not to mention uh, abuse of power more broadly and bad administration, that that's not okay, that we can do better. I'm John Lawrence reporting. House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff would not say whether the House plans to subpoena John Bolton. The former National Security Advisor reportedly says in his upcoming book that President Trump told him that U.S. security aid to Ukraine was dependent on investigations into Democrats, including presidential candidate Joe Biden and his son Hunter. Walgreens has reached a settlement with California authorities for allegedly employing an unlicensed pharmacist for more than a decade. The pharmacy chain will pay $7.5 million to settle the consumer protection lawsuit. The complaint alleges that Kim Teen Lee worked as a pharmacist in multiple Walgreens locations in the Bay Area. Authorities say she took part in filling more than 745,000 prescriptions, including upwards of 100,000 for controlled substances. Lee hasn't worked for Walgreens since 2017 and was criminally charged last summer. The Alameda County District Attorney's Office said Walgreens didn't properly check her credentials after she promoted to a position requiring a license. The company will also have to implement a verification program. Walgreens hasn't responded to CNN's request for comment. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer is delivering the official Democratic response to the State of the Union address Tuesday night, but she won't be the only Democrat with something to say. Senator Bernie Sanders will deliver his own remarks from the Courier Museum of Art Auditorium in Manchester, while he'll be holding a rally. New Hampshire is the second state to vote in the Democratic primary election. Speaking there instead of attending the State of the Union could be seen as a snub, since all members of Congress typically attend. Sanders is one of four Democratic candidates who has had to take time off campaigning to be a part of Trump's impeachment trial. He has offered State of the Union responses on his social media channels several times in the past. This time it will be more formal, in front of a studio audience with media in attendance. That's wrap. That's all for, channel, for national news. Whenever we come back, Rebecca Vaughn will have your Channel 14 business and entertainment update. Welcome back to Channel 14 News. I'm Rebecca Vaughn with your business and entertainment update. The world's largest brands have a big garbage problem, and now five of them are banding together to try to fix it. A new project is aiming to reduce the destructive numbers of plastic waste that piles up in landfills and oceans. 
In today's Consumer Watch, Steve Nans has a closer look at the radical effort and what it means for your favorite grocery items. Fixing the plastic problem. About 91% of plastic waste ever created has never been recycled. And now, the same companies making the kind of plastic containers that end up in the trash are taking action. Nestle, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, Unilever, and Clorox all trying to get consumers to switch from single-use to reusable packaging. And they've trusted this man to help them do that. We're going into a Procter & Gamble and saying, reinvent the packaging of these world-famous products completely. Build production lines to fill this reinvented package. Oh, and by the way, I have no proof if anyone's gonna buy it at all. But they said yes, because they know that there's a garbage crisis and they really don't want to contribute to it. Tom Saki is the driving force behind Loop, an innovative service he describes as a 21st century milkman. The service sells brand name goods like detergent, shampoo, razors, and ice cream, all in reusable packages. Here's how it works. You pay a refundable deposit for each package. You use the products, then send the containers back to be clean and refilled. We've invested so much time, energy, people resources, and dollars because as we think forward to the future, we know consumers will demand more recyclable products. So far, the company claims Loop is used by more than 10,000 people. Next year, Loop products will be available in major retailers like Walgreens and Kroger. What's neat is you could buy it at one retailer and return it to the another. And so it really creates this nice network effect. We're adding a brand every day. For Consumer Watch, I'm Steve Nannis. Right now, Loop operates in the East Coast and in parts of France. Next year, the service is expected to launch in California, London, Toronto, Tokyo, as well as parts of Germany. The Super Bowl 54 turned out to be the, mo the tenth most watched Super Bowl in NFL history. 102 million people watched the Kansas City Chiefs beat the San Francisco 49ers Sunday night 31 to 20, according to Nielsen numbers. That's up from last year's big game, which averaged roughly 100 million viewers. Chiefs star quarterback Patrick Mahomes led the team in a comeback during the final minutes. It's the team's first Super Bowl win in 50 years. 24-year-old Mahomes was named the MVP, the youngest in Super Bowl history. The BlackBerry, or rather, new versions of the iconic full keyboard smartphone may be disappearing once again. The electronics company that has been making the BlackBerry, TCL Communications, says that it will stop selling them in August. The company's partnership with BlackBerry has ended and it no longer has the rights to design, make, or sell the devices. BlackBerry stopped making its own smartphones in 2016 and outsourced productions to TCL for a fixed period. It's unclear whether BlackBerry will partner with another company to continue selling the devices. TCL will continue supporting existing devices with customer and warranty services until 2022. Hamilton is hitting the big screen next year. Lynn manuel Miranda, who stars as Alexander Hamilton, announced the news on Twitter. Disney is bringing the hit musical, along with the original Broadway cast, to movie theaters in October 2021. It includes previously recorded stage performances in New York at the Richmond Rovard Theater, where the show first opened. The original cast includes Miranda, David Diggs, Jonathan Groff, Renee Elise Goldsberry, and Philippa Sue. Hamilton blends rap, hip hop, and R&B with classic Broadway tunes to tell the story of the Caribbean-born French and Scottish heritage Hamilton, one of America's founding fathers. Hamilton received the 2016 Pulitzer Prize for drama and has won 11 Tony Awards. Some big names in movies and music are making news. David Daniel has details in the Hollywood Minute. No matter how fast you are. I am not too big compared to you. No one outruns their past. I am more easy, you trying your best to become me. And mine. Just caught up to me. Been a long time, down. The first full trailer for Fast and Furious 9 pits brother against brother. That's right, John Cena plays Jacob, long lost little brother of Vin Diesel's Dom. And apparently he's been nursing a grudge for a while. The over the top action gets into gear when Fast and Furious 9 opens May 22nd. <laughs>
The latest from BTS is Outro Ego. The clip, which the music superstars are calling a comeback trailer, features J-Hope singing about the path that's led him to this moment. It's a sample of what's to come on the new BTS album, Map of the Soul 7, dropping February 21st. something rare, a new Miles Davis video. So Emotional, featuring vocals by Lala Hathaway, includes classic photos and performance footage of Davis from the mid-80s. So Emotional is off Davis's long-lost album Rubber Band, which was incomplete when he died in 1991. The album was finally released last year. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That's all for business and entertainment. When we return, Sam Hickson has the latest in Waynesburg sports. We're going to fade up to uh, camera three in five, four, three, two, one, take it. It's been the doldrums on the hardwood for Waynesburg basketball as of late, and they had the tough task of going to Buzz Riddle Gymnasium to play the Westminster Titans, who are a perennial PAC contender. Waynesburg taking on Westminster for the second time this year, and the Jackets kept it close in this one. They had three scorers in double digits, including Casey Castrell. She had herself a night off the bench, finishing the game with 15 points, including 5 of 9 from 3 and 5 of 11 from the field. Here's Elena McDermott finding Castro at the top of the key from the parking lot. She's got it. Brooke Fuller had herself another great day. Her standout sophomore season continues. She collected 14 points, including her seventh double-double of the season. But the Jackets just couldn't keep up with the defense of the Titans, who finished with 26 points off of turnovers to make up for their abysmal three-point shooting. Here's Ashley Russell going coast-to-coast coast on the steal. Finishes with the layup. Jackets had some trouble with Kayla Bennett who was a force in the middle, collecting 17 points and 12 rebounds. Here she is picking up the bucket and the foul. Waynesburg would fall to the Titans by a final score of 76-72. The Waynesburg men's team finds themselves in a bit of a slump as of late, dropping their last four games and falling to ninth place in the PAC. They were looking to avoid a season sweep against the Titans for the first time since 2016. Brennan Smith on the 1,000-point chase. Had himself another stellar night. 17 points for him there. He finishes the reverse layup. And once again, taking it, the Titans to school in the paint. Now going to lure Dylan O'Hara to sleep outside from three. Jackets had a pretty impressive first half from three, shooting five of eight. They cooled down in the second half, only going two of eight. Here's Cam All with the catch and shoot. One of his finest collegiate performances, eight points and seven rebounds. And then Sam Heater, top of the key. Got it. But at the end of the day, it was Dylan O'Hara, the top scorer in all of the PAC, and no one has given Waynesburg more fits than O'Hara himself. He scored 35 in the first matchup. Wasn't too far off in this one. He had another 29. The Waynesburg transfer finished his day 11 of 17 from the field to go along with nine rebounds. Here's O'Hara with the, one of his nine rebounds, putting it back up for two off the glass. Then finishing the transition, quick pull-up jumper from the baseline. Nailing it. And finally, O'Hara taking it to the cup one last time. Waynesburg would lose the game by a final score of 73-58. to 58. Success isn't always given. It's earned. The Waynesburg wrestling team has learned that on their way to three consecutive PAC championships, and they're seeking a fourth. They would have to go through the top team in the PAC, the Teal Tomcats, before they could start thinking about the PAC tournament. I was at the Rudy Marisa Fieldhouse to check it out. It's a new week on the mat for the Jackets, who are the hottest team in the PAC right now, winning their last six matches. But they take on the top team in all of the PAC right now, the Teal Tomcats, who are very hot as well, winning their last four. It'll be the ultimate clash of the Titans tonight at the Rudy Marisa Fieldhouse. 
Senior night for the Wu Brawlers was not only a moment of honor for the seniors before the match, but also during it. Five of six members of the senior class competed against Teal, and three of them came up victorious. I'm uh, really proud. I've got six great guys that I'm really going to miss, and uh, our team's going to miss them. They're hard to replace guys, so next year is going to be a, a tall task. But, uh, you know, I just hope for the end of the year they have uh, reached their goals that they want to get, and that's what we're shooting for. The Jackets did find themselves down 9-3 to three and needing a spark. They found that spark in junior Josh Kuzlock who recorded a pin in under a minute. It would lead to the Jackets finding a way to win five straight weight classes. And for Kuzlock, the game plan was simple. Uh, just go in and try and get a quick ball and just to work hard and try and um, try and push their gas tanks because we, we have better gas tanks than them. Senior Zach McCall drew one of the toughest matchups of the night for the Jackets in the 165-pound weight class against Teal's Peyton Hearn, who had yet to be defeated this season. McCall's great preparation led him to a 15-4 victory. It was the week prior at practice that had such an influence on what McCall did on the mat. Uh, really just pushing the pace, uh, keeping the conditioning up, um, really just getting in different situations so that you don't panic when you're out there. And uh, I just think we all did what we needed to do. The John Summa tournament is the only thing that stands between the Jackets and the PAC tournament. It can be hard not to look ahead. And going 4 for 4 and raising the PAC championship banner is something that is on the mind. We want to make it four in a row. Uh, every year we've won it so far. And if we can get this last year, uh, I think it would be very important to us. Um, we're hoping. Uh, you know, it's been a good dual meet season. I'm really proud of the guys. You know, we could have... Uh, not giving up, giving up six points at 125 uh, all second semester, and uh, guys are just battling. I think their focus is good. I think they, you know, we have good workouts in the room, and I'm really happy about that. I'm looking forward to it. So it'll be a tough task, but I think we're going to give it all we got. For WCTV Sports, I'm Sam Hickson reporting. That's all for sports. Coming up next, Dakota Kiefer with your five day weather forecast. Have you ever been to the Everly Library? If not, you should, because it's great. They have books of all different genres. History, biography, fiction. Try The Evolution of Life, Life of Pi, or Jurassic Park. So what if books aren't your thing? Try movies, like Frozen, or TV shows, like Lost. Books and DVDs aren't the only thing, though. Take a trip to the second floor. Welcome to the Writing Center. These tutors will tell you everything you need to know about writing a paper, and they'll help revise your essays. Now let's head back down. Behold, the Knox Learning Center. Need to print something out five minutes before your next class because you procrastinated? No problem. You can also print off pictures of dogs. Because, well, you can. So grab your homework, laptop, and textbook, and study diligently. Bring your lunch, too. Actually, you can't. That's illegal. Now you know the Everly Library. Stop by any time. Seriously, it's open all week. I'm Dakota Kiefer with your WCTV weather update. It's been quite the rainy day today and you may want to keep those umbrellas handy because that's not expected to change in the next couple of days. Wednesday will cool down a little bit and feel a little more like winter with a high temperature of 39 degrees and a low of 37. There will be occasional rain showers and some sleep may mix in throughout the day. Thursday will be another day that ends up feeling like spring. 
It has an expected high temperature of 61 degrees with a low of 33. There will be some showers early and it will turn into a steady rain later in the day with southwest winds at 10 to 15 miles an hour. The humidity will also sit at 83%. As we roll into the weekend on Friday, there will be, rain, there will be snow showers in the morning with accumulations uh, expecting to be less than an inch and a high temperature of 35 degrees. It will stay in the mid-30s throughout the day with western winds between 10 to 20 miles an hour. Expect the winds to die down in the clear skies into the night. Saturday will be mostly cloudy with a high of 40 degrees and a low of 31. Into the night on Saturday, there will be occasional snow showers that could lead up to a one inch accumulation. On Sunday, shower, snow showers are expected to stay around in the morning with a high of 38 degrees and a low of 28. It will stop snowing in the evening and will remain mostly cloudy through the, through the night. Finally, to start the week on Monday, we're expected to have a high of 41 degrees with a low of 34. Snow showers are expected in the morning and the rest of the day will be mostly cloudy. So guys, uh, spring sort of feels like it might be coming early. Yeah, I mean, Putsatani Phil forecast of that, so I'm excited for spring. Yeah, we're going to bring a lot of warm weather coming, so hopefully it'll start even earlier than really expected. I'm never going to complain about an early spring, not at all. Well, thanks for tuning in for this week of WCTV News. Make sure to tune in every Tuesday at 5. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.